Today we're going to show you how to rebuild the fluid section of one cylinder of our two cylinder F800. Again, anytime you're working with electrical equipment, equipment of any time, make sure the power source is unplugged. We're simply going to take the pump apart to be able to remove one cylinder to rebuild it. So we're taking off the fluid assembly. This comes off very easily. Our manifold assembly, pull that off. And we're going to use our, release our quick connects and uh, take the elbow assembly off. And then I always like to take off as much as we can to get the weight off of it to make it easier to pull apart. So we're going to remove our toolless clamps, remove the lower assembly. Again, you always want to use a rubber hammer on any metal parts because you do not want to damage them. Removing the lower ball assembly. And we're going to remove the top clamp because you'll see that the piston assembly has to drop down. Remove the top clamp. This assembly will not come down without removing the pin up on the top, which we're going to do. 5 16 nut driver. You can use a screwdriver, but a nut driver works a little bit better. And we're going to remove the safety cover so we can access the pin to drop the cylinder. So in order to get the pin out to drop the cylinder, we're going to have to simply just want to push the spring up and now we can push the pin out. As we push that pin out, hold it from underneath and we'll get your pin started out a little bit. Okay, our punch caught it. Now we're going to push it out completely and we're going to drop it. So basically everything else will remain intact. We're going to rebuild the assembly here on the bench. Keep in mind, uh, anytime you're clamping a cylinder in a clamp, it has a propensity to bend regardless of what it's made of. So we're just going to put it in there just enough to hold it and uh, so we can get our assembly out. It's nice to have a big vise like this. It really helps in the hold everything together. There again, no metal hammer. We're just using a rubber hammer and we're simply going to bang that out. So these are the components we're replacing. The plastic seals, there's one here and there's one inside which is called the throat seal which seals on the piston assembly to keep fluid from leaking out of the top. Typically you know it's time to replace your pump when mud is coming out of the top of the piston assembly and then you know it's leaking and no longer holds pressure then you know it's time to rebuild your pump. Keep in mind, we're building one cylinder of two right now. If one's leaking, you want to rebuild one, it'll still work. The pistons work independently. But if you want to rebuild them both, this is, it's going to double this uh, process that we're doing now. So now that we have the piston out, we can simply remove this brass retaining ring. And inside is the throat seal assembly. Usually doesn't come out this easy. This is a clean pump. Usually going to have mud in there. Sometimes you will have to get, get it out with a screwdriver. But there again, just keep in mind you don't want to damage the metal components because they, most of these components are sealing components. And if you damage them, you're going to lose your seal. So you want to get in here and sometimes I'll utilize a screwdriver or a spatula. But I'm just going to be very careful while I'm knocking out this mud I'm just going to be very careful that I don't damage the threads or the sealing assemblies. So these are just mud particles that get stuck in there just with normal pump operations. So I'm going to get that good and clean. Um, sometimes I'll use a wire brush, but I get that good and clean. 
and then we're gonna take our new packing assembly. Now whenever I pull a packing assembly out, I always keep it on the bench in the same manner I pulled it out. So when the new one goes back in, it's not upside down. The packing, the bottom packing does not have a bottom or a top, but the one that goes in the top does have a bottom or a top. You just have to remember the large portion, the larger diameter goes up. So when I pull it out, I put it in that configuration. That way I know it goes back in. Anytime I'm putting threads together after they're clean, I like to put grease on them. Um, we typically use lithium grease, which can be bought at any hardware store. Uh, the reason we use lithium is because if there's any rubber components, this has a rubber component down here. If standard oil-based grease gets on a rubber component, it will swell and fail. So we always want to try and use lithium or water-based grease. So after we've got our threads greased, we're going to simply put our packing assembly back in. Um, we want to make sure it seats all the way on the bottom. So sometimes you might have to hit it a little bit with a rubber hammer. But once it seats on the bottom, we're good. We know we're good. And we're, again, be liberal with the grease. Don't be afraid to put them on any of the threads. Put the grease on the threads. And we thread this down. If these threads do not go on right away easily, that means they're cross-threaded. It's pretty hard to cross-thread them, but just keep in mind, if it doesn't go on real easily, then it is possibly cross-threaded. Take it off, re-clean it, put it back on. Okay, so we're just gonna put this down hand tight until it's snug. And then we're gonna tighten it up. Now with this particular pump, there's no way to tighten this after it's reassembled. So you want to get it good and snug, but not too tight. If you make it too tight, on that packing, you have metal above it, metal below it, and a plastic packing. If you really crank on this, you have the potential to squeeze that packing, and it'll intrude into the piston assembly. If that happens, your piston rod is not going to go up through it. So you want it just good and snug. Now that said, as we start pumping, if we get water leaking out of the top right away, we know this wasn't tightened enough. So you're going to have to take it apart and re-tighten this, okay? But you cannot do it while it's on the pump. So we're just going to make sure we're good and snug on the thing, just not too tight. So we have the, we have the top packing done now, so we're simply going to take this out of the vise. Again, remember it's a little heavy, so you don't want to drop it. Take it out, set it on our bench. And now we're going to rebuild the bottom assembly. Again, I'd like to tighten it in a big vise like this to get it good and tight. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to put wrenches, pipe wrenches, or anything on this. Uh, this is your sealing assembly. You want to keep it pristine. You don't want gouges in it. You'll lose efficiency on the pump. So we don't want anything on the, on the sealing assembly. So you can simply put a large crescent wrench up on the top and they're standard threads to pull this apart. So this is the component we're trying to replace. So we need to get it off. And there it is, it's off. So now what we're going to do, before we put our new one back on, we need to get all this mud and debris out of here. Now we have it cleaned, so we're gonna simply assemble it back together. And we're going to use a medium strength thread lock. This happens to be the blue one. And we're gonna put a little bit on the threads. We put our new packing assembly on. We, we want to inspect the ball to make sure it's in good shape. Uh, if it's not, we want to replace the balls, but this one looks pretty good. Where it seats looks good. And we want to inspect the piston assembly just to make sure there's no gouges in it, make sure it's in good shape, and this one looks good. And we're simply going to screw it back on. There again, if it feels like it's cross-threading, stop. 
You do not want to cross thread these. You'll never get it back together properly. As I alluded to before, it's nice to have a big vise. It's nice to do this in the shop instead of the field. The beauty about this two cylinder pump is if one piston does quit pumping for one reason or another, you can still pump out of the hose. You can still pump material and water with the other cylinder. So you can still get cleaned up. If you have to, many piston pumps have a slave cylinder and a drive cylinder and will not operate without both of them working. This Graco pump is different that the, in that you can pump with one cylinder to get your pump cleaned up. As we reassemble the piston assembly, we want to put some throat seal lubricant liquid, throat seal liquid on both the cylinder and the packing. This will help it assemble easier. Plus, we always have this uh, throat seal liquid always bathing the upper cylinder anyway. So, and it assembles pretty easily. Okay, now it's ready to go back in the pump. So as this piston assembly is ready to go back together, you want to, we know the outlet, we still have the other one on, the outlet is gonna go like that, and then the pin has to go straight in. So you wanna turn this till you get it close to where you want it. Approximate, we can turn it after we get it together, but you just wanna get it approximate. Simply just want to push the spring up a little bit, just enough to get the pin started. Just barely start the pin. That spring will hold it. And then we're simply going to pick up the piston assembly and drive the pin in to hold it. Put the pin in until it's flush. Now we're simply going to drop the retaining ring back on. Now, in order to put this back together, you want to push it up to where it goes. And I'm not going to put this clamp on yet until I get my manifold on, and I'll show you why. The beauty of only doing one cylinder at a time is you're not trying to line up too many things together. That one came off straight. It's still going to be straight. This is the only one we might have to move a little bit. Well, we're going to put our manifold assembly back on. See, sometimes you have to twist it just a little bit. And there it goes on. Now we can put our clamp on uh, because we're in the right position. If you put the clamp on first and it's off just a little bit, you're not gonna be able to get your manifold on. Uh, in the bottom assembly, of course, we have a steel ball, just like we had in the top assembly, and there's a seat in here. This seat will come out as it wears out, uh, or the ball wears out, you can replace them together or separately. And then there's also a rubber O-ring that uh, goes around the outside here that uh, can be replaced too. But this is in pretty good condition, so we're just gonna put it back together. Till it seats, and then simply put your clamp back on. After we have the pump together, we want to make sure and put our safety guard back on. This keeps people's fingers out from the pinch points. There again, you can use a screwdriver on this. I like to use a 5 16 nut driver or drill. It just works better.
And before we start, we want to add a throat seal liquid into the top assembly. And we're ready to start pumping. 